I guess why I gravitated towards online poker is because I could, um, I mean, well, one, I made more, mo I would make more money playing online because I could play more tables. Um, I could see way more hands an hour, right? Because you don't have to wait for the dealer to shuffle the cards to deal them out. It's just, it's so much quicker, it's so much quicker. Um, so my edge would be um, amplified through quantity. Even though the players, even though the majority of players online are actually better players than you would find in the Welcome back, everybody, to the Steady Trade Podcast. To me today, me and Stephen Johnson are very excited to interview Ray, the creator of Confessions of a Market Maker. Uh, I've uh, listened to his podcast. I know he's usually the one creating the interview, so I'm excited to have him in the uh, hot seat today. So welcome, Ray. For come, thank you for coming on the show today. I'm excited to have you here. Yeah, it's not really appreciate you guys having me. It should be uh, interesting being on the other end. It should be fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, hopefully we won't make it too painful. But Stephen, yeah. I can't. I can't promise he won't some have some out of the box questions. So yeah, take it easy <laughs> on me, please. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I'm I'm excited because um, I've spoke to some blackjack players who've become traders, but I've never spoke to some poker poker players who become traders. And I just caught some of that on your last interview and I was just, I was just curious how, how, how far did you go? Because I, I was playing in Newcastle in England, made some cash and went to Australia. Um, and I, I didn't make loads. I made like $8,000 playing No Limit Hold'em, went to Australia and lost half of it and quit. So I'm okay. just, and then I went on to trade successfully, but I'm just wondering how, how far you got with the game before you transitioned? Oh man, I mean, I was professional for about um, three and a half years full time. But I mean, even before that, when I held the sales job, I was playing um, semi professional, like, you know, for extra income until I got to the point where I was making enough to just, you know, make a living doing it. Um, and yeah. yeah, I mean, poker is my first passion, man. My first love. Yep. Yeah, no, same. But were you ever in the World Series or anything like that? Were you ever in the biggest events? I went, yeah. I mean, I usually go out to the World Series. I'm, um, I went out last year. Um, I went out two other years now. I'm a, uh, but I primarily go out for the cash games. I'm not a, uh, a big tournament player. See, like uh, tournaments to me. I don't know if you're, uh, if you play tournaments, Stephen. But it's yeah, like, both, 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 both. I'm well versed. I'm well versed in the poker world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So tournaments to me was a little bit too much, uh, like a job, right? Like you got to show up at a specific time. You take a break when they tell you when to take a break. Um, and <laughs> I always enjoyed the cash games. You're playing with the real money right there. You win, you lose the money. Um, and that's just always been more my style. And, and um, what, how on earth, how, I, mean, we, I mean, there was a poker boom about eight years ago when Joe Hashem won the World Series. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, vivid. Yeah. Just, just before, and yeah, and some other guy who won who wasn't as good before him as well. But that, it was about 2008 poker boomed. Did you get into it then or was it? Well, that, that's when I really got into it. Um, I, you know, I got to uh, give all the credit to my dad. That's how I really got into poker is I used to watch him play online uh, when I was younger. Now, I was just a little, um, I just missed the poker boom. I was a little too young at the time. Now, I still played online, but I mean, it was underage, you know, so it wasn't, um, yeah. and, I, and I grew up, I was, I was real into football, so I, I didn't um, really get into it until I turned 21. But yeah, that's how I got into it around that time. So which is the time period you're talking about, the money maker, the Hashem era. Yeah. Um, my dad, my dad was really into it, and that's where my love for it grew. I watched it all on ESPN. I would sit behind my dad, yeah. play on party poker, full tilt, and that's how I learned the game. And then from there, he he ordered a bunch of poker books. And I just I mean, I was like 13, 14 years old at the time, and I just went through all of them. And so yeah, that's where my love for the game originated from. Yeah. Wow. So you you, you studied like hell pretty much and you read all the books. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I even I qualify. I mean, funny story, like true story, true story. I'm not, I'm not making this up. I um, there there used to be a uh, poker site. It was called Poker School, um, and it was uh, kind of like a membership type of uh, service, right? And you wouldn't necessarily play for money, but what you could do is you could qualify for live events um, yeah, on the like site. satellites. I actually, one I actually won a tournament to qualify my dad for the World Series of Poker. Um, wow. 
had the 10k main event he cashed for 40k so that was a nice uh, uh, that was a good uh a good little story and so yeah that that's yeah i just have a deep oh. yeah I hope you got some of that. I hope you got some of that cash uh, from him, no? Yeah, he you wants know, 10%. <laughs> <laughs> he, promised me, he promised me, he's like, hey, if you stay out of trouble, uh, by the time you're 21, I'll give you, uh, I forget what our agreement was, uh, but he deemed I, I didn't stay out of trouble, but he, he, made, oh, it shoot. Nah, he, made, he made it up to me later. We, we've had different like little arrangements, backing, taking things like that. So was he was, surprised at how good and adept you were? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a, a question for him. I mean, well, I guess what he really instilled in me was like the, uh, the hard work. Like, yeah, I, I really like, um, put a lot of time into studying the game, not just like going and playing through trial and error, but like any piece of material I could read. Um, and it's like, yeah, I mean, he really instilled that into me. So I don't know if he was necessarily surprised, but I, I think he always had a sense of pride, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that, that it's so amazing that you transitioned from that educational development into trading because yeah. it just I don't know that most traders or beginner traders realize how much discipline or studying is involved and so I, I feel like gosh you had a leg up on every other trader because you already realized okay for me to get really good at poker I have to study I have to read these books at 13 that's pretty freaking impressive dude yeah, no, I, I appreciate it I, I, and um, I, I think um, and, and not not to uh, be like oh like I'm um, so good or, or anything like that. But yeah, I've noticed cause like, you know, we have, um, I'm part of like, you know, some trading rooms and um, noticing the, like the learning curve that I've had to go on through. Cause I mean, I'm still under a year of trading versus uh, like brand new people who maybe, um, I don't know, have a nine to five job or just a regular job. It's, it's a little bit different. Like, cause I've had to battle like those mental demons that come along with uh, quote unquote gambling I, for lack of a better term. You know what I'm saying? Yep. What, so are you comfortable talking about them? Like what? what yeah, absolutely, you, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think that helps people. Um, I think, I mean, I think, um, and I realize, realize this now, but like inherently I'm a very emotional person, um, which is almost like counterintuitive to doing what we do, right? Um, uh, but at the same time, I think it's taught me about life. And at the same time, I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so, yeah, I think the swings – of winning and losing and not getting too high when I'm winning. Cause I noticed it, it this was always a trend, right? When I would go on hot streaks, right? Um, it was always, what would follow the, the hot streak? A big down streak. Because I'd get too big, I'd get too like, oh, I'm so good, I'm the best, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then when I would be on down streaks, I'm like, shit, what am I doing with my life? Like, this is stressful. Like, do I wanna go through all this? I'm not that good. Um, and it's like, it's, it, you're never as good as you think you are. And I don't think you're ever as bad as it seems. Uh, right. Uh, you are getting that level. Yeah. Yeah. The, what you're saying is actually the same thoughts that go through my head every day as well. It's, it's uh, but I'm also too emotional and, and we've talked, I mean, I'm like, I've, I've come through Tim Sykes and uh, I made YouTube videos. I don't know if you've seen any of my stuff, maybe go to YouTube videos and then Sykes kind of Sykes taught us and Sykes was like, you're the most arrogant person I know by not being someone who's profitable. And I'm like, I, but when I'm losing, I'm also the most miserable and sad and underconfident person you'll ever know as well. So you've got those polar opposites of the, yeah, I feel for you because I know how hard it is for me. So if that's how you are as well. And it's funny, like, like we were talking before, right, Stephen? Like, like we both had a losing trade before we got on here. And I, I literally like, and this is one of my things I do come to like, I guess help get me like my equilibrium back is like, I'll go for walks. I'll walk around the neighborhood wow. just to like, and, and almost kind of like a meditation, right? Like I don't even yeah. think I just walk, just, yeah. just walk. Cause I'm like, all right, I gotta go on the podcast. I can't be in a shitty mood. Like I gotta, you know, I gotta be upbeat. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Just little things to just try and get my equilibrium back. Yeah. Do you, do you feel, you know, I, I'm always fascinated about those traders, including Steve, and you know, getting to know him over this past year, that say they're too emotional. You know, part of me feels because I'm a coach, I feel our emotions are like this incredible uh, crystal ball. Like they're they they potentially have the power, uh, or whether we have the power through them. So I'm I'm sort of like 
you guys have the secret sauce, the emotional ones, the ones that really feel deeply. You guys have the secret sauce that I think actually many traders who are sort of robotic may, may be missing out on, but how to harness them and not to be taken, you know, like putting the leash on those emotions and learning how for them to serve you rather than you serve them. Right, right. No, that's uh, Kim. Thank, uh, that's uh, makes me feel much better. No, I, and and I really like that. And I, I think that's uh, part of the like the evolution, right? That I'm trying to hit is just is trying to get that because yeah, I, I think um, yeah, I got to make it work for me because I think having that 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 intense feeling is a good thing. It's just it's hard to manage it. For sure, for sure. I think I think it's tricky, trickier, no doubt. But but I feel like it's uh it's like a superpower. And I, and I feel like there's a level of sensitivity that I've seen in Steven. He, his ability to pick up on nuance. And yeah. if this description you've given of yourself, like you guys have the ability to see what others can't because of that sensitivity. So how do you make that work for you is, is really what it's about because you know, the, the people that are so kind of locked in that analytical vision, they can't see certain trends. They can't feel the vibe of like, okay, I'm feeling this. What's the guy on the other side of this trade feeling? Like you guys have the power to potentially tap into that. That's great. I mean, that, that's really encouraging to hear. Um, and you, you bring up like analytical, like, let me ask, I want to ask you a question, right? Cause I, um, I guess to help like combat my emotional side, I've been like more of my trading now has been a little bit more like, um, uh, a analytical, like, uh, almost like not, not automated. I'm still executing the trades myself, but I'm doing a lot of like, uh, like back testing, uh, you know, strategies of that and going more with like what this, with, the the data is telling me as opposed to feel like, do you think that's a good way to almost, cause I, it's like, I almost kind of want to like eliminate my weaknesses, if that makes mm -hmm. a sense, or is it, is it like a fine balance, right? I, I think, I think what you're doing makes so much sense. I think, look, you have to have the, the clarity of like, this is how I roll when this happens. Like all of that is the discipline and the setups. And once you practice them in my experience, and this comes with everything beyond trading, I think back to my coaching, when we were given specific techniques to use, they told us like, right now you want to just practice this for the whole three days during this course with every person you coach, just get this style honed and every single one you couldn't dabble in any other kind of style but then at the end once we became you know clear and adept in each of those styles at the end they said okay now you have to go in they called it in the bones now you have learned all this you've created all these disciplines now you have to know when you're coaching somebody that you might take a piece of this and you might take a piece of that but we couldn't do that at the beginning we right. had to build the foundation. So to me, it sounds like you're building the foundation and then eventually you get to go to this place of in the bones where you do get to on occasion zig or zag because your sensitivity is picking up on something that isn't logical. Wow. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. No, I, I love it. That's great. That's, yeah. But, but Ray, you're talking about tracking data, right? You're talking about yeah. tracking data, tracking stocks, managing the in and out points, the, the volume versus uh, the float and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for me, I would I would say relying on gut. It's gut instinct. What you're thinking? Shall I rely on gut and intuition? I'd say, in my experience, in my first two years, it's the worst thing you can do. Right. Because right. Because you've got because your gut instinct is wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so what I found, and I did exactly the same as you. I tracked hundreds. I tracked hundreds of stocks on specific setups. And I just found edges and specifically and robotically relying on the data, right. I found an edge and that edge made us profitable in that setup. Then after that, then you can use your kind of gut instinct and your intuition to say, if this has happened in this setup, uh, say for example, you say, if I know all longs lose, if this, this, and this happens according to the data. So then you can say intuitively, well, I'm going to short this here because do you know what I mean? Because the data suggested this, and I'm just going to go one step further, marrying two things together. Then you can. But I mean, even some, I find that when I use intuition, four, I'm four years in now. Um, whenever I use intuition, it's generally when I make a mistake. 
Right, right, right. No, it's generally I, when things go wrong. Yeah, I mean, and that's really my been my approach to uh, poker right before. I, I mean, I guess before poker got really um, uh, a lot of the uh, like the AI, um, a lot of like solvers. So before, like, you know, poker is actually like a solved game. Um, and like, you know, have the software, I can run any spot, like model any type of hand, and it'll give me, uh, you know, the correct way. Like, so I can't, my strategy can't be exploited. And yeah. from seeing that, right. So seeing how like my old strategy compared to an unexploitable strategy, mm-hmm. like you said, a lot of times my intuition was wrong, mm-hmm. you know, like they're not, you know, it's a Chris rock. It's a saying from Chris rock. And I love this, right. He goes, um, uh, there's math and then everything else is debatable. Wow. That's you know, an awesome like the, quote. The, the math and data don't lie. And yeah. like you said, Stephen, that's how you found your edge. By, and then from there, and this is, this is what I'm taking, you tell me if I'm wrong, Stephen, with what you said is from looking at all the data constantly, years and years of that, then you kind of start developing an intuition, a feel for the, what, what that's looking at, what that's telling you. Correct? Look, yeah, basically what happens is uh, you'll, you'll have a specific setup and you'll track all of the data for the setup. So like with, with the penny stocks and the micro caps, I'll track in, like percent, I'll track a sector, how much it's up, mm-hmm. what the price is, what the volume is, what the float is, what the news is, if there's any dilution in the, in the SEC filings. Um, and has it, has it gapped and failed before? Is it a multi-day run? I'll track all of these different variables. And then I'll know every time, because history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. The market always rhymes with itself. So I'll always know, Every time these set of variables all come in line and happen, 96% of the time on my data, I would say it happened, say I've got 100 examples of that exact, all of the variables lining, 96 times it failed at this point, four times it didn't. So I'll know, I'll short here from the 96% win rate, and, and normally it declines 15% from that top percentage. So I know I can take 15%. Then the intuition comes where you see the pattern play out so many different times, you think, ah, it's doing that again. I think I can get 16% or 14%. Oh, this looks stronger than this. I've seen this setup so many times, but this looks a bit stronger than normal. This might be the 4% that it doesn't work. That's where your intuition comes in, but it's not in, it's not in like randomly guessing stuff. It's yeah. the nuances. Right, right. right. Hey, yeah. that's, that's, the, uh, that's the way like the art of it comes in, right? Like blending, the blending of the analytical and the, the, the intuition. But yeah, I'm not... Yeah. I, I'm not at that point yet, but, but do you do you have your style or the style of trading defined, or are you still defining it? Um, yeah, no, I mean, right, right now I'm I'm focusing on um, primarily I'm on like a, a real short swing time frame, like two to three days, uh, mixed in with a few day trades. It depends. Uh, uh, it depends on how um, like some of my swings actually turn out to day trades because it hits like I'm happy with the trade right away. Um, but yeah, like I'm sticking within that like two, three, four day swing time frame. What was the switch? What, what was it that moved you from poker to check out, you know, to, to say, okay, maybe this is a good pivot. Yeah. I mean, um, man, I'd even say for, uh, probably about a year or so I was uh, thinking, um, of pivoting out of poker, but it was kind of like, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, definitely getting, going to get like a nine to five job out of the question. Like, that's just not what I wanted to do. That's on me. <laughs> uh, this, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> And uh, well, I guess I guess the reason why I wanted to pivot out of poker, I mean, it, like I was mentioning before, w- uh, with software, um, poker is getting a lot tougher. There's not as much edges anymore, right? So, like Stephen, if me and you are sta- uh, like studying with the solver, we're probably going to play like close to like let's say out of 100 hands, we probably play 90, 95 of the hands the same way. That's not much edge to gain from, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's good, and I don't, and I so I I've, I've always been an online player, and then with the U.S., there's not really too many options for online poker and I don't want to spend 40 hours of my week in the casino, to be honest. That's just, uh, yeah, I want to spend my time. Yeah. So. I'm not a but poker just... player, but I'm just curious both for both of you guys. Do you find that playing poker, uh, online is, I would think it would be radically different than playing poker at a table with people. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, yeah, it, I mean, it, it is, um, I guess, why I gravitated towards online poker is because I could, um, I mean, well, one, I made more, I would make more money playing online because I could play more tables. Um, I could see way more hands an hour, right? Because you don't have to wait for the dealer to shuffle the cards to deal them out. It's just, it's so much quicker. The pace is so much quicker. Um, So my edge 
would be um, amplified through quantity. Even though the players, even though the majority of players online are actually better players than you would find oh, in the casino. Really? You, you get your drunk guys, you get people just there having fun. Online, most of the times you get more of your serious people who are yeah. studying the game, who do take mm -hmm. it serious. But I found just the, the pure quantity of it made up for me, you know, yeah. with what came up for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, Steven, it's, did you play funny. online? Or did you play in No, it's, it's funny. No, I played both. I read, I read quite a few different books on it. I was the same. I played a lot online. And, uh, and what, where I found my niche was, I'm from Newcastle in England, and it's the northeast of England. And it's, it's a heavy party. Newcastle's a party city. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got a couple of casinos, and, and it's, right next to, it's right in the city center. And you'll get a lot of drunk businessmen with money coming in. Oh, yeah. So even through the week, but especially on the weekends, I would just sit there, I would play tight, I'd wait for the right hands to play, I'd slow play them, which means that when I knew I was quite comfortable with like an 80-85% win rate, I'd let them bet into me. And, and I, could easily, I could easily come home with a thousand pound a night um, because I would just sit there and not play many hands. And even though you're not playing any hands, they still want to bet into you because just no one's paying any attention. It's yeah. such a loose game. You love but, Online, it was tough. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It is, it is. It um, but you know, like for me, for somebody who's going to play day in and day out, I mean, just the whole like the convenience of being at my house. Yeah. And then, like I said, like I, I mean, when you play live, right? What are you seeing, Stephen? We're maybe seeing thirty hands an hour, thirty-five hands an hour. Online, I could see a thousand an hour. Holy you know mackerel! I mean? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's. Would you play not... multiple games at once? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Wow, how's that's your, intense. How's your discipline? How's your discipline in uh, trading? Is it is it okay because of the you yeah. managed to form it in poker? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I think that's what I was like alluding to before. Like, so as long with the, like the mental aspect that came along with poker, um, the the discipline, uh, the man, the bankroll management. That's what we call it in poker, right? Uh, managing your losses, mm -hmm. you know, etc. Um, I would like to think that is a, a strong suit of mine. And I think like with my learning curve with trading is just, I guess, more of the, uh, the technical side, I guess, maybe the execution, you know, et cetera, those things. Mm. Wow. I, 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 what is it called in poker? The, the managing the risk? Uh, bankroll management. Yeah, I so really like that term, bankroll management. That, that just feels so applicable to trading because I'm a baby yeah. now. I'm still learning about trading. So, but that is such a, it's so kind of like connects you to what is really at stake, your bankroll. Like, I like yeah. that phrase. Yeah, and Stephen, I think do, I, you, do you use that phrase? Yeah, I mean, I knew in poker, it's kind of the same as in trading. It's, yeah. it's the same, the same concepts in trading as well. Managing your bankroll, not, not yeah. losing more than like 5% of your account or whatever. Don't lose yeah. more than 5%. But of course, what we'll all do, we'll blow up our account, we'll blow up all accounts. <laughs> but uh, Ray, what, what are you trading with now? Are you trading with a big account? Are you started small? And, and just how's it going? Because I don't know, are you, are you running profitable now within a year? Because if you are, it's pretty exceptional. Yeah, okay. So I, I started off trading futures, right? So the, the guy who I host the podcast with, JJ, he's a former market maker. That's what he trades. I started off with futures. Um, more or less I broke even. You know, I lost a little bit. Nothing, nothing too serious. Now, now the beginning of this year, I, um, I started because like I was saying with my poker background, I started like modeling hands and stuff. I, I wanted more of, uh, I wanted data. I wanted, you know, I, I needed to see the numbers to, that's just yeah. my stuff. I need to see it. And so, um, I started using, uh, I don't know if you have, uh, trade ideas. Uh, I started using that, um, and getting into that. So then I started trading equities at the beginning of this year. Now I'm, um, started small. Um, I'm profitable right now. Now I don't want to jinx nothing. Um, you know, cause I know how it is. You could run hot. You know, I mean, I probably anyone who's been going long these past few months has been making money. So yeah, it, it annoys us when people. I know some people, no joke. I know people have been trading a few months and they've quit the jobs. And like, ah, yeah. oh, I made two hundred bucks, then twelve hundred, and then I made three grand this month. And I'm like, do not quit your job. Yeah. Just for three green months at this market. So you know, I, I know, I know how these things go. I don't want to jump the gun and be like, oh yeah, like look, I'm a successful trader now. I'm profitable. Blah blah blah. We'll see. It's a long run game, so so we'll see. I'm just, just trying to keep my head about me and just like just focus on the process, not the results. How, how much it? are you studying? Go on, sorry, Kim. No, no. How much okay. do you study? How much are you studying and tracking and and each day? I'm just curious. Yeah, um, I, I mean, it depends. Like, I try not to like uh, 
I have a propensity to overwork, right? And I think that's another like um, uh, concept that I think is hard for people to grasp, right? It's like sometimes, like, especially like in uh, performance uh, activities like we're doing, right? Like poker or trading, it, more effort doesn't always equal more money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I, I try and balance it. But yeah, I mean, there'll be days like so, so, so far this week. I mean, after the market closed, I mean, I'll go to the gym. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll start back testing. I'll start seeing how my strategies have been doing over the past week, the past month, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there'll be some weeks where I'm not, I'm feeling a little burnt out. I'll just save it for the weekend. So, uh, you know, I guess it depends. I just try and monitor and make sure I'm not like over exhausting myself. Cause it, it's funny how every time, like, um, I notice with myself, like when I would take breaks, whether with poker, yeah, primarily poker, um, I would always come back fresh and I would like, you just see uh -huh. things different. You know, you see things different with a fresh mind. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, dude, you can you can burn out and train. You can burn out and you'll start showing up and not really want to do it. You'll start thinking, yeah. "What am I doing?" And you'll burn out and you'll take a bad loss in the cons. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that that that's that's a big. I guess Kim, we talking like uh, one of my like weaknesses that I think that's definitely mm -hmm. one of them. So like, yeah, I have that drive, which is good. But hey, yeah. we gotta we gotta manage it. You gotta balance the. I you know I think balancing the 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 life outside of the things that we love can be tricky because it's it's so much a part of who we are you know yes. i struggle with that myself i love coaching i love what i do it's my bliss my you know my ministry my priesthood whatever you want to call it but you know i have to remember that you know i have to go to the gym and i have to you know do other things because it can become all consuming and you're yes. right we are we come back fresher and more focused in ways when we get that white space. Uh, but it, but it's tricky, especially when you love what you do. And it sounds like you love, you know, the trading now. And I know Steven does too, you know, but Steven is always trading every time, you know, we connect on WhatsApp or whatever, or he is working his job or, uh, he doesn't even sleep. I don't think he just, he's just always trading. No, no, <laughs> right, no, like I've, no, I mean, it's crazy. I just got used to it. But for me, like, I'm in Dubai, right? So the market doesn't open till half five over here. So I'll work at night or, night or six. So then I'll trade like four or eight, four or nine. And sometimes 10, 11, 12, depends how long, what positions I'm in. Yeah, and then there's YouTube podcasts and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's um, sometimes I take a loss in question why I'm doing it. Like today, I'm like, is this the life that I want? Should I not just have an average job and have a girlfriend and, <laughs> and uh, not be stressed, watch the TV? Yeah. That's but right. um, I really, no, I relate, I've done. I relate more on. than you, Stephen. No, I relate more than you know, man. Like the, the swings, man, it's crazy. Like, oh, I'll, like one week on top of the world oh my god like feeling it and then the next week yeah i'm qu questioning everything like what am i doing with my life i'm depressed uh you know it's it's uh it's no, fun. No. It's like, why did i choose this life i'm like i'm an emotional person and this is the life i chose like what, what I'm, I'm a sicko i'm a sicko <laughs> <laughs> no but uh i'm like, like, um, like pain Stephen. i don't know you're like, what? No, but it's, it's, you must like pain. Okay. I must like pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I'm talking to the girl that I'm seeing and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I made 15K last month. I was like, ah, oh, 15K is the best month I've ever had. And I'm like, ah, oh, great. I'm really, really doing well. And then this month I just lost three and I'm flat. I'm flat this month because I just lost what I was up. And she's like, Stephen, most people don't have jobs in Dubai because they've all lost the jobs. Wow. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but I feel like I feel worse than them. <laughs> Yeah. But, but, but I don't, do you know what I mean? It's just, right, it's right. just, it's the emotional swings are tough when you're emotional. They, they, For sure. They are. They are. Do, do you drink much or not? Do you drink I, ever? I, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know what you define as a lot, but yeah, I had fun out in Tampa. I went out to Tampa this week and I had a little bit of fun, but uh, yeah, I, I, I drink, I drink. I, I try and uh, not too much. Right. You know, but I, I have no, it's, it's good. Nah, because if I have a big win or a big loss, I'm like, follow away. Yeah, this is how I handle it. Yeah. <laughs> big win, big loss. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ever late, Stephen. Yes. Uh, uh. All right. So here's a question for you. Do you think? What do you think now that you've been trading a year? Are the are the best? Not the best qualities, but the necessary qualities to the beginner traders that are watching this, to the newbies. 
what do you think they need to ask themselves or prepare themselves for uh, to, to really kind of get uh, plugged in to seeing if they've got what it takes? Um, yeah, I mean, I, probably like what we're talking about, right? You know, uh, the, the, the mental, um, emotional side of things. I think that's probably it. If you can't, um, I don't want to say master, but if you can't at least be aware of it, if you can't, um, like curtail that a little bit, like, yeah, I don't think you could be successful, right? Like, I mean, you, you could be like, you could see all the edges all you want, but, um, cause it's like this, right? Like, like if you have, um, if you lose, you have a loser, you're emotional about it. That can compound into another loss, compound into another loss. It doesn't, you know, so I would say, yeah, just really, um, yeah, it's we're, we're the, the mental aspect first, I think, for most people. And then from there. Yeah. yeah. Stephen, what, what do you, did you, was there a question you went to ask him before that I interrupted you? No, no, I am. Um, oh, okay. I just, I just wanted to give you some reassurance because I know you're a year in and I'm, I'm four years in, but um, I don't know many people that made it in poker that didn't make it in the stock market. I don't know anyone. I don't know yeah. anyone who came from a professional poker player who didn't make it in the stock market. Wow, because that's pretty that, remarkable. That, yeah, but that aggression, the aggression that you've got in poker, you have the, you're either aggressive or you're passive aggressive when you play in poker. And that aggression, aggression in a, it linked with someone who, like quite, if you back test them, quite and you're analyzing the back testing. Yeah. Um I think it, it it will be difficult for you to fail. I would think. And it's I, I think it will be difficult for you to fail. Okay. So I just want to give you the reassurance in this in this uh dark black alley that you seem to be walking down <laughs> and you're wondering where the light is. Yes. I, I'm I'm quite confident I'm not just saying it, I'm not saying it. I see a lot of people I'm like he's gonna fail, he's gonna fail, she's gonna yeah. fail. Yeah. Uh, I I have I have a lot of faith that you'll get it. So just take solace in the journey and try and enjoy it through the ups and the downs. I know it's tough. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's ever going process. Now nah, that means a lot, Steven. I, I appreciate that, man. Thanks. And, and um, I guess, I guess to finish up, I was just thinking like, I don't know if I fully answered the question before me transitioning to trading. Um, I, and I almost like, once I started getting into trading, I almost uh, was upset with myself that I spent so many years with poker and what's um, it's, it's, a, it's a dying game. I think most people would agree with it. It's getting harder and harder to make good money with the type of effort you put in. So once I saw trading and my eyes got opened up, there's so much more opportunity in trading. Um, and not, that I regret, not that I regret all my years playing poker because I think it has prepared me for, for trading. Um, but yeah, the, I just, the, the opportunity in trading, there's just so much more money in trading. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so words, Steven. Thank you. It's, no, trading, tra trading is, uh, from someone who's done both and I was profitable in both, Trading is significantly easier. You've got a what? You had a four. You had a four percent edge in poker, and maybe ninety six percent loss, and four or five percent won. These days, it's one or two, maybe. Yeah. Wow. I mean, honestly, you're you're up against a lot of pretty dumb people in the stock market. There's a lot of clever people, but there's a lot of real idiots who don't do the work. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that because that's what I've speculated, Stephen. But like, no, there is for me because I that's what I thought. I'm like, man, like I. I've been banging my head like for so long with poker, it, like just uh, it's it's you know. So that, that reaffirms what I was thinking. So thanks. You uh, you guys I, I, have I just used to be one of them as well. You, you just enrolled. The all the poker players <laughs> are all gonna like listen to this podcast and <laughs> dive right into the pool now. So yeah. you guys may have just increased your competition. <laughs> Hopefully not too much. Hopefully not too much. Exactly. What you know? When what made you start your own podcast? Tell us about Confessions of a Market Maker. Yeah. Well, so so once I started ex exploring into like the trading space, um, you know, got in touch uh, with JJ. Um, he's a VWAP Trader One on Twitter, um, and uh, someone suggested to us that they think we, you know. Uh, all right, like JJ's writing a book. He, you know, he has a real funny past as a market maker, you know, a lot of wild stories, you know, I guess like uh, Wolf of Wall Street type of things esque, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. Of wild things. And he's writing a book and he kind of wanted to get his things out, but he, I guess they wanted like a, a host, somebody mm -hmm. to help narrate it and then also be like, okay, he's a new trader. This, like, this will chronicle my journey, right? So if you go back to the first episode to, I don't know, we're almost like 40 in. Um, you know, I would like to think I've made a, a big growth because at first I didn't even know what the hell I was talking about, to be honest. Wow. I didn't even know what a market maker was. I didn't know half of these things I was, you know, but, um, 
So it was like, yeah, okay, to get his story out, because a lot of the beginning podcasts were uh, some of his story, what he knows, what a lot of retail traders don't understand from the, you know, the institutional side of things. Um, and then it sort of morphed into, um, you know, interviews, um, you know, and just et cetera. So um, I've had a lot of fun doing it. We try and have fun. Yeah. Uh, and tell some jokes. But, you know, I think we got some, uh, you know, good educational things as well. Well, well, I love the fact that you're coming, you did it at the beginning before you really understood some of the terms and then you're with somebody who's been really, you know, there so long that I, it's just a great combination because I'm sure you ask questions that maybe, you know, somebody who'd been in it longer term would never have asked for, but I kind of feel like that's an edge too, right? You see things differently because you're not, you're not influenced or prejudiced coming into the vision. You're making your own determination. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would like to think that like we we like learn from each other. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, you said, sure. I have a different background. He has his background, and we all, we both open each other's eyes. You yeah. know, not I mean he's taught me a lot more than I've taught him, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah. Certain yeah. things. Um, and <laughs> open eyes, and he, he's just a fun. Uh, shout out to JJ. He, he's just a fun personality, good person. Um, yeah, we we have a lot of fun. Together. You guys have good chemistry. I've you know listened, and it's really good chemistry. Yeah, really yeah, it's it's like uh, people like uh, like compared it to like the odd couple, you know, like he's he's of yeah. older generation, I'm a newer generation. But yeah, any balance. Um, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. What's some of the memorable? Do you have a memorable interview or two that really yeah. was like a before and after? Ray is totally looking at life different or trading different. Yeah, I, I mean, I think a, a few of them. I think the first one that sticks out to me because uh, you know, from my poker background, um, and I don't know if you know him, Stephen, uh, Bill Perkins, um. He's, and it was like the perfect combination, right? Because he's a hedge fund manager uh, in the natural gas space, but he's also, uh, he plays high stakes poker, right? So he's not a professional poker player, but he's well known in the poker community. Yeah. Um, so getting Bill Perkins on the podcast and when we were still relatively Same. new, I mean, it was like 10 episodes in um, was a big deal. And then he, uh, you know, I, I try and be funny with the intros and he, uh, he loved my little intro. He laughed and I was just like, uh, it was just a big moment for me, you know, I was totally. like, all right, that was a big moment for me. And then um, also recently we've had, um, we've had two actors on from Billions. <gasps> what? The TV show. Yeah, we've had on uh, the guy who plays Dollar Bill. Kelly. <gasps> That's so much fun. And then we had on the guy who, um, uh, Ben Kim, who is. Uh, I love uh, Ben Kim. <laughs> Daniel Isaac in real life. And so uh, we had on Ke um, Kelly first, uh, who's Dollar Bill. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous because I'm like, all right, this is not a trader, this is an actor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he had a good time. He like after we we talked after the podcast for like you know 25 minutes or so, and um, I was just like, cool. all right, it was a lot of fun. I was able to hold my own with an actor. It was it was good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congrats. Th those are great guests to get. I think, Be especially actor or not, you know, they have to obviously just to get into character, be immersed in. And again, too, right? It's a different perspective. It's an actor's perspective on this game, you know, yeah. that we're trying to play well. So, yeah. uh, and dollar bills, you know, I did work, I worked in two hedge funds myself. So uh, I have to tell you, just watching dollar bills personality and that character, and even Ben Kim, like you can see the archetypes in all the characters and billions that right. undoubtedly, you know, are a little bit dramatized maybe for television but those characters all exist in the hedge fund world for, you yeah, know right. for the most part and right. and that's part of what's you know magical is i think maybe it shows people how different the perspectives can be how different the backgrounds like one of the things i think surprised a lot of people you know after i left talking about it was how many kind of blue collar uh, backgrounds a lot of the very successful uh, guys were, came from. You know, their dads were police officers or firemen. They came out of like Brooklyn or the Bronx. And, you know, this became the next step for them. But I don't think most people realize that, you know, yes, it's very smart people, but a lot of Wall Street is made up of people that it's not that they didn't get an education, but they come from the streets. So there's a street smart Definitely. to them. That's what JJ, that, that's, JJ will like die by that. That's what, that's what he, he always told me. And that's what he like, I guess, trying to encourage me along the way. He was like, Ray, like the, like the best traders that I've known are not the guys who graduated from Wharton. Aren't these like Ivy League guys? These are the guys from like, and he said he knew guys who no college degree right off the streets. 
the best yep. traders we've seen. Like uh, one of the guys we had, one of his old buddies we had on the podcast, so another good one we had, his name was Carmel Wright. The guy started in the mailroom. Wow. Worked his way up and the guy now is, I don't know what his net, net worth is, but it's uh, it's pretty damn high. You know, yep. and he's- uh, Yep. So, and that, and that to me is like the fortitude of, uh, what was the word you used before, Stephen? You, you used a word regarding like, it was like, you know, you're like going down the black alley. Like there's this, like, there's a grit. Like you yeah. got, like ultimately what I see trading, uh, all the good traders have or the necessary ingredient is grit. Like Stephen has grit. Like that is to nice. me, one of your biggest strengths, Stephen, yeah, is yeah, the yeah, grit. Yeah. Yeah, you just hold on with your teeth, no matter what, like you're on a fucking moving freight train and you are just not going to let go. And that is grit. Like you can't buy that in a store or in a book. Nah, it's, I mean, it's, it's weird because we say that we're kind of super emotional and that we're going through these swings, but I think what we go through, not many people can go through. So mm -hmm. we're more emotional, they're less emotional, but they can't do what we can do. Mm -hmm. But so there's this, but I mean, the, the, what that comes from is kind of the a, a relentless, unshakable belief that you can do what you're about to do. Yeah. Like for me, four years ago, when everyone said I'd never make it, I was like, fuck all you guys, I know for a fact I'm going to make it. If I can make poker, I can definitely make this. And I don't know if that's your thought in the stock market. Do you think, look, if I nail poker, I can definitely nail the stock market? Because that, that was my belief that got us through the dark days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I always, I always try and keep a sense of uh, humility, Stephen, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like, that's why I said before, uh, what you were saying, uh, my, my, what I've been thinking now is like, yeah, like, I mean, if I was able to make it in poker with how tough poker is now, like, like Stephen, I, I didn't come up during the, the boom days where people were just printing money. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I told you, I was a little too young during those, the, during those days. So poker has been on the decline since then. So my whole thought process has been, Man, like if I've been able to grind it out and my, make it through these tough, the tough era now of poker, mm. I, I think I can make it in the stock market. I mean, I think you, you also got to have, like I try and have a sense of humility, but I think you got to have a self, uh, sense of confidence as well in yeah. yourself. And your yeah. No, but I mean, like um, there's nothing wrong with saying, I know that if I work and study yeah. for eight hours a day or seven hours a day and I do it over a three year period and I've already got the mind that's already geared towards this probable gambling type of game. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty unlikely that I'm not going to make it. Like, that's just how I thought. I didn't right. say I'm going to smash it. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to make mm -hmm. 10 million. I, I was just like, nah, it's, that, there's a very good chance I'll make this with the right working process over time. Definitely. And I, and I think I have to make it Steven. Cause like, I'm going to like, I'm going to make it work. And I like, like you said, like, like I like what you're saying with like our emotional side, but with that, I think it does. I, I think we both have that grit as well. Like even no matter how bad I get beat down, I'm coming back. <laughs> like I'm going to come back. I might not feel uh, good I, in the moment. I, I really don't. I'll feel shitty, but the next day, all right, back at it. Let's go. Like I, like I, I'll get beat down, beat down, beat down, but I'm coming back. Coming back. Ah, there's there's no plan B for me. There's no plan B, and I, I hope I don't lose everything and have to start again. <laughs> but if I yeah. do lose everything, I'll lose yeah. everything and I'll start with five hundred bucks again. But yeah. I, I will never stop. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Amen. I I think that is like the perfect note to to end on. And and I guess I wanted to say to the viewers, like, not everybody is built to be able to not have a plan B. That is not for everybody. And only the person listening to this knows if they can be that kind of person. And I, I'm somebody who really identifies, like you have to know what your needs are. But if you happen to define that one of your needs is freedom, you know, and that becomes a non-negotiable for you, then you probably are gonna be the kind of person who can work in a place where you don't have a plan B. And, you know, I never had a plan B either when I left the finance world to start my own coaching firm. Um, and it's been terrifying and a roller coaster ride for 13 years. But it was certainly this, I don't have a plan B, so I better get myself back up on the hard days when a contract doesn't come through and make something happen. So I think that not having a plan B can serve us, but it may not be for everybody, but certainly it's for you, Ray. And Stephen, it's certainly for you. <laughs> Well said, Kim. Well said, because you're right. You're absolutely right, because it isn't for everybody, for sure. Well said. Yeah. yeah. So, Stephen, any last questions for Ray? No, no. It's it's been it's been good to meet you. I'm I'm very excited to see where you'll be in two or three years. But I know that you'll be there. 
Thank you. It's just way. He never he never says that to anybody, Ray. So I'm kind of like, wow, this is a special moment. No, that yeah, that no, really it really does. It really does because you know any any forms of encouragement, you know, uh, it, it helps along the way being being a new person. So I appreciate that statement. Thank you. I'm excited to to see too where you go and uh, and but but already now your like, you're such a contribution. Yeah, tell us tell us your Twitter handle. What's your Twitter so I can keep track? Yes, Twitter. Oh man, uh, I think all X Day X Ray X. Oh nice. Twitter. So I think that's what it is on Twitter. I know I should make it easier. That's too complicated. I should make it easier. <laughs> well, yeah, what is it? All all X Day X X Ray X. Add me on there. Um, I post once in a while. I'm not too, too active, but I definitely update podcast stuff on there, et cetera. So yeah, get on there, follow the podcast. Um, I'm in two uh, trading rooms uh, with JJ's is micro e futures. Uh, go check that out. If you guys trade futures, if you're in equities, we've got a nice like little collaborative community. That's equities, etc.com. Like I said, it's a collaborative environment, good people. Um, and yeah, follow the podcast confessions of a market maker. We have good guests. It's funny. It's entertaining. So I appreciate it. And I thank you guys so much for having me on. I had a real fun time. For sure. It was awesome to have you. Thank you so much for coming on and letting us interview the interviewer. I appreciate that very much. And we're going to post all of uh, Ray's information, the the link to the YouTube. Uh, Do you, do you, you guys are on iTunes too? Yeah, we're on, I'm pretty sure we're on, yeah, yeah. We're on iTunes. We're on all the uh, major podcast platforms, I believe. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, I think we will wrap it up, Stephen. Yes? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Okay. So thank you for watching. And uh, let's just see how it all unfolds. I'm excited to watch Ray's journey. I'm about a year behind you, Ray, but I'm about 15 years behind the concept of uh, all that you learned in poker. So now I'm almost wondering if I should learn how to play poker, guys. No, don't do it. It's worse than trading. And trading's a disaster in itself. Uh, okay. Okay, so aloha for now, everybody, and uh, thank you for watching the Steady Trade Podcast.